Okay, so now I want to spend a few videos really digging into conditional probability because this is something that's really re related to things like machine learning and pattern recognition. And so I want to spend a couple lectures really developing this concept of conditional PDFs. Okay, now we started talking about conditional probability as one of the very first concepts in probability, right? We talked about the probability of A given B, which was defined as this probability, right? And remember the setup was I had the sample space, I had an event A and an event B, and I was asking, you know, let's think about this is the A intersect B, right? So this is like saying, okay, I told you that B happened, right? So now I'm kind of confining my world to this sample space. What's the probability of A given B? It's basically how much is in this red part over the probability of B happening, okay? And so an important consequence of that was that if um, I had a bunch of uh, events B that partitioned up the sample space and I looked at some event A, that the probability of A was equal to the sum of these conditional probabilities times each of the probabilities, right? This was called the law of total probability, okay? So now that we've talked about joint random variables, we can really revisit these ideas where instead of looking at events, I'm looking at things that involve different random variables, okay? And so, um, you know, for example, I might say I have a communications channel, right? Um, this, this is an electrical, electrical engineering application where I have a channel, I put data into the channel and then stuff comes out of it, but this stuff may not be exactly what I put into it because of noise and transmission errors and stuff like that. So I kind of want to know um, what is the probability that X went into the channel given that what I saw was Y, okay? Um, or in machine learning, I may say, okay, I observed a picture, right? And now I want to know what is the probability that picture is of a cat, right? And so I can talk about, you know, what's the probability that I have this. We talked a little bit about these kinds of things in the context of events, like, like in one of our very earliest lectures, but now I can talk about this in terms of random variables. So what I want to do first is talk about um, the easiest case. X and Y are both discrete random variables. Okay, what that means is that X has a PMF, Y has a PMF, and they have a joint PMF. Okay, so I have a PMF X, a PMF Y, and I have a joint, right? So these are what we would call marginal PMFs. And then I have a joint PMF. And what I'm interested in today is what I'm going to call the conditional PMF. So the conditional PMF is basically the probability that y is equal to some value given that x is equal to some other value. Okay? And I can write this. I already know what the answer to this is, right? I know that this is like saying I have the intersection of these two events over the probability of this, right? And now I have terminology, I have notation that answers both these questions, right? This top thing is just the joint PMF for these two numbers, and the bottom thing is just the marginal PMF at this number, assuming that this number is not zero, right? I only care about this when, when this probability is non-zero, okay? So, this is, you know, kind of an important thing, so important that I'm going to write it again, right? What I have is a new PMF formed by the conditional, which is the joint over the marginal, okay? And I'm going to write this without any variables at all. The conditional is the joint over the marginal. Or in a different way, as we're going to talk about, I can rearrange this to say the joint is the same thing as the conditional times the marginal. 
So I'm going to do a bunch of examples along these lines later. Um, but this is kind of like key thing to remember. Like if you're going to write a crib sheet, put this on your crib sheet, right? So let me do an example just to kind of really develop the idea for a pair of discrete random variables. So we kind of did this before. I'm going to make it a little bit easier. So let's suppose that we flip a coin three times. X is equal to the number of heads. Y is equal to the position of the first head. And then zero if I didn't actually get any heads. Okay, so let me enumerate the possible outcomes of the experiment and then the values of X and Y. Okay, so um, I have X, Y, and here are my outcomes, right? Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, oops, tail, head, 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 tail, 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 head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. Okay, that's all of them. So this is kind of numbered. So here, this is the number of heads. And the position of the first head is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 0. Right? So now I could build my joint PMF from this. Okay? Um, and so let me do that. One way is to do it with a table. The other way I think that is easier to immediately see is to build just like a, you know, picture like this. So this is x, this is y, these are the possible values of x, these are the possible values of y, right? And each of these, so this had 1 8th probability. I, I'm just going to look back at my picture here off screen, but I can see that this has a 1 8th probability. The only things that happen more than once are this guy, right? Everything else has 1 8th except for that guy, which has 1 quarter. So basically that's x equals 2, y equals 1. So I have a 1 quarter here, and then I have 1 8th probabilities in a few other positions, right? And this all adds up to 1, okay? So this is going to be P of XY. So um, now I can compute the uh, marginal PMFs. Either I can do that by, you know, maybe it's just instructive to say, okay, the marginal PMFs are what I get by summing up along either the rows or the columns, right? So the summing down the columns gives me 1 8th what does I get here? I get one quarter plus one quarter is a half, one quarter, one eighth. So this is basically the PMF of Y. And if I add along the rows, I get one eighths, three eighths, three eighths, one eighth. This is basically the PMF of X. And like we talked about before, I already kind of know this is the way it has to work, right? Because this is basically binomial and this is basically geometric. Um, and we talked about that kind of in a previous case. So I guess first question while I'm here is, are these variables independent or not? Uh, no, they're not, obviously, because if they were, for example, the probability of getting this would be the probability of getting this times the probability of getting that. And clearly, these two multiply to 330 seconds, and this is 1 eighth, which is not equal to that, right? So these are not independent, just as a side note. Um, okay, so now I want to do is I want to compute the marginals, okay? So, or I'm sorry, I want to compute the conditionals, okay? So computing the conditionals, the way I think about this is hold one of these things constant and then normalize either the corresponding row or the corresponding column, right? So, for example, let's suppose that I want to look at the probability, the PMF of Y given X, okay? So um, the PMF of y given x, right? This is basically like, you know, fix um, x and normalize the resulting PMF of y. So kind of what I mean graphically here is to say, okay, let's suppose that I've fixed the PMF of x, right? Or suppose I'm fixing x. So then I'm kind of looking at things in a row-wise manner. I'm saying, okay, if x was equal to 0, what would the PMF of y be? Well, it would be exactly 1 here and 0 everywhere else. So it's kind of like saying, take this row and divide it by, um, you know, the sum of the row, right? If I'm looking here, 
I would have basically a uniform PMF on these three values, one, two, three. So I can kind of write down, um, you know, um, what's the easiest way to do this? So let me say it like this. Suppose that I have, again, a table like this. So here it's like I'm fixing X and I'm renormalizing along the rows. So I, what I said was that I would have this would be the normalizing of this row, this would be the normalizing of this row, this would be this guy, and this would be this guy. So each of these here is a PMF in Y. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of rebalancing to say, okay, I gave you this bit of information. How does that change your understanding of what Y should be, right? Same thing I can do if I want to do it in X, right? So if I want to do the PMF like this, X given Y, now I would have a table like this where, again, to keep everything um, the same as the joint, I'm going to keep Y on the top. But now it's like every one of these columns would need to be a valid PMF, right? So again, I'd have a PMF like this. So here, this would be fixed up here. And then my PMF here would look like 0, 1 quarter, 1 half, 1 quarter, 0, 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0, 1, like this. Right, so each of these is also a valid PMF going down the rows, or going down the columns, right? So when you're in the discrete world, it's not too hard to do this. I want to talk in the next two lessons about what happens when uh, y is continuous and x is discrete, and then what happens when they're both continuous. Okay, so I'll see you in a few lectures.